how are you? Uh, I, was, I was told that there would be a video in between me and Cheria uh, so that I could like... Oh. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I'm here to talk about um, death and bodies because I'm the comedian. <laughs> and uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, but I'll start with bodies like... I've given up reading women's magazines. Um, because I think they make you feel weird about yourself. Like, it, apart from, like, all the weird quizzes that are like, you know, are you anxious? I don't know, should I be? Like, <laughs> or, or Cosmo quiz, are you over him? Question, are you doing this quiz? Answer, you're not over him. <laughs> you, you see these, they, they make you feel weird about your body. You make, they make you kind of hate yourself. And then I'm also a feminist, so when I hate myself, I also hate myself for hating myself. <laughs> Which is a beautiful uh, cycle. And, you know, there was these tips on being sexy. You know, winking is sexy because by deliberately bringing on a lack of depth perception, you show you're willing to live dangerously. <laughs> I have no idea how far away you are right now and it is hot. <laughs> or, you know, like, uh, touching people is sexy. Touching someone in the arm is sexy because it proves that you're not imaginary. <laughs> And isn't that the sexiest thing of all? <laughs> what else? The, um, the sultry, half-lidded gaze is sexy. You know the sultry, half-lidded gaze? It's a little bit like this. <laughs> That's sexy because uh, it implies that you might fall asleep at any second. So you're a scarce resource. It's supply and demand economics. I don't know, it's this weird thing and then you see these beautiful models on the billboards and the magazines, these amazingly beautiful young women who have that um, evenly distributed oily gleam. Because <laughs> sex is location-specific moisture but sexiness is evenly distributed moisture, <laughs> apparently. And you see these beautiful women, they look a little bit corpsey but not in a bad way. Like they do those kind of rigor mortis poses and they... <laughs> the heavy bone definition and I used to look at those women and I would feel sad because I don't look like that and they're aspirational and you want to look like that and I would think well no matter how much I diet no matter how much I exercise I will never look like that but now I just think it's just a matter of time <laughs> Uh, that's morbid. I went, uh, I went to a funeral uh, recently. I went to a funeral recently and it was one of those happy funerals. Have you been to one of these? It's like a celebration of the life of the person who... They had flowers and they had uh, colours and they had bubble blowers. I didn't know this until that day. It was a Saturday. I didn't know this, um, but the saddest thing in the world is watching somebody blow bubbles like this. <laughs> Beautiful bubbles going out in the air, each one reflecting a perfect panorama of sadness. And, I, you know, I don't, I like, obviously there's no wrong way to mourn. But this felt like the wrong way to mourn. <laughs> I just thought, you know, in our society we don't have a proper ritual for grief anymore. Like, in the ancient, you'd wear black or you could uh, put ashes in your hair or you could tear your clothes and run wailing through the streets and like hire other people to wail for you like sadder, sadder, no less sad, we weren't that close. <laughs> we had a proper, and now instead we had all these people apologising for crying and the bubble blowers and, and that was on the Saturday and then on the Sunday I went to a goth wedding <laughs> and I don't know what to feel about anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 